In a previous video, we looked at introducing simple harmonic motion and the theory behind it. So in this video here, we're going to apply it to exam questions. So it says a particle P is moving with simple harmonic motion in a straight line. The period is 6.1 seconds and the amplitude is 3 meters. Calculate in either order the maximum speed of P and the distance of P from the center of motion when P has speed 2.5 meters per second squared. Well, assuming that the particle starts its motion at the origin, we know that the general solution to a differential equation that represents simple harmonic motion is x equals r sine of omega t, where omega dictates the period and r dictates the amplitude. Well, we know the amplitude is 3, so we'll get x equals 3 sine. And we know the period normally is 2 pi. So if the period is 6.1, then the multiplier is 2 pi over 6.1 t. So there's the equation. So it wants the maximum speed of the particle. And let's use the dot notation now. So that means differentiate it once with respect to time. So let's do that. And we get x dot equals. And we'll get 3 cos of 2 pi over 6.1 t times the differential what's in the bracket 2 pi over 6.1 equals 6 pi over 6.1 cos of 2 pi over 6.1 t so the maximum of that is 6 pi over 6.1 because the maximum of cos is 1 so the maximum of 6 pi over 6.1 times that is 6 pi over 6.1 therefore max speed equals 6 pi over 6.1 which is approximately equal to let's put that in the calculator so 6 pi over 6.1 equals 3.09 meters per second so next it asks us to find the distance of P from the centre of motion when it has speed 2.5 metres per second. So first of all, let's find the time when it has that speed. So we've got x dot equals 2.5, which means that 2.5 equals 6 pi over 6.1 cos of 2 pi over 6.1 t. So dividing by 6 pi over 6.1, get 2.5 divided by 6 pi over 6.1, which is 0 0.80904, which implies that 0 0.80904 equals cos of 2 pi over 6.1 t and if we arc cos both sides we get 2 pi over 6.1 times t equals and the arc cos of what we just found is 0 0.62828 0 0.62828 which means that the time is equal to that number divided by 2 pi over 6.1. So divided by 2 pi over 6.1, which is equal to 0 0.60997. The time equals 0 0.60997. So now we've got the time that it's at that speed. We're going to find the distance away from the center at that time. So that implies that the displacement, and we're going to use this equation here, equals 3 sine of 2 pi over 6.1 times 0 0.60997. So 3 sine of 2 pi over 6.1 times 0 0.60997 
approximately equal to 1.76 meters. So here's another more applied question. So it says the particle is moving along a straight line at time t seconds and its displacement x meters from a fixed point O is such that d2x by dt squared equals minus 4x. Given that at t equals 0, x equals 1, and the particle is moving with velocity 4 meters per second, let's find an expression for the displacement of the particle after t seconds. So this one isn't so simple, but we've got d2x by dt squared, which I find easier to write in dot notation, x double dash, and rearranging that we get plus 4x equals 0. So we're trying to find an expression for displacement, we're going to solve this as a second order differential equation. So let's find the auxiliary equation, which is m squared plus 4 equals 0, which means that m squared equals minus 4. So if m squared equals minus 4, that means that m equals plus or minus 2i. And by this point, you should be well practiced with your second order differential equations, well practiced enough to know that when the roots are purely imaginary, this implies that the solution x equals some constant a times sine of 2t plus b cos of 2t. So we were given that at t equals 0, x is 1. So let t equals 0, x equals 1, and sub it into that equation, which means that 1 equals a sine 0, cross it out, plus b cos of 0, which means that b equals 1. So now we can write that a little bit better. We get x equals a sine of 2t plus, and b was 1, so it's just cos of 2t. We're also told that the velocity is 4 when the time is 0. So if we differentiate that, so x dot equals 2a cos of 2t plus minus 2 sine 2t is what cos of 2t differentiates to. So get rid of that plus. I'm going to let x dot equal 4 and t equal 0, which means that 4 equals 2a times 1, take away 2 lots of 0, which means that a equals 2. Therefore, the general, uh, this particular solution is x equals 2 sine 2t plus cos of 2t. So to remind ourselves what part b asked, it said hence determine the maximum displacement of the particle from O. So the maximum displacement, we could differentiate and set equal to 0, but that would be quite difficult. I think what's an easier thing to do is to use the compound angle formula to combine these two terms here into a single term. So, if we try and combine it into sine of 2t plus alpha with some constant at the front, well, that's identical to if we expand it using the compound angle formula in the formula book. We get r sine 2t cos alpha plus r cos 2t sine alpha. And copying our original expression for x, we'll put it just underneath. So we can see that the number here in front of sine 2t is 2, and the number here in front of sine 2t is r cos alpha. So we've got r cos alpha equals 2. Similarly, the number in front of cos alpha, uh, cos of 2t here is 1, so that means r sine alpha equals 1. r sine alpha equals 1. So if we call this first equation a, and this second equation b, then if we do b divided by a, we get r sine alpha over r cos alpha, r's cancel, equals 1 half, 
which means that tan alpha equals one half, which means that alpha equals arc tan of a half. equals 0.464 okay so now finding r we get r equals square root of the uh, coefficients a and b so 2 squared plus 1 squared equals root 5 therefore our displacement x equals root 5 sine of 2t plus 0.464 the maximum value of which is root 5 now in hindsight we probably didn't need to work out this 0.464 here like we did there all we really needed was this coefficient at the front to find the maximum so we've probably done a little bit too much work in here but I always think it's good to illustrate this method because it will be relevant in other questions. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.